Hey, Oz. Hey, Curtis. What movie we got this week? This week, to wrap up Patreon subscriber recommendation month, <laughs> we have a movie brought to us from Mandy K. Thanks, Mandy. Movie marriage from me is A Nightmare on Elm Street mm-hmm. meets Scream. Okay. Meets Hansel and Gretel. Uh, yes. With a little bit of the Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> <laughs> this week we have Wes Craven's new nightmare. <laughs> the Arsenio Hall show. <laughs> well, he's got a little talk show he segment does, yeah, there. Yeah. And at one point Arsenio Hall had Jason Voorhees on the show. <laughs> in character which naturally yes yeah, seriously yeah, okay to which it was just arsenio carrying the entire thing because jason just stared at him just stood there motionless yeah so like, what kind of projects are you working yeah, on right? he sat on the couch like <laughs> 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 so uh did you bring us a clip from your new film <laughs> exactly uh but no, originally i had i had the matrix in here only mm-hmm. because um we're in and out of reality, yep. and Freddie's constantly wearing a trench coat. But mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I'm going to duck that one because there <laughs> wasn't enough bending over backwards. So <laughs> welcome back, listeners and viewers, to another week of Let's Talk About Flicks, the weekly podcast where we take a monthly theme, this month being Patreon subscriber yeah. choice month. Last the, episode of Yeah, the putting the wrap on. It's been a really good month. I it really is. enjoyed it's, it yeah, thus far. Yes, very fun month. And we are back with Mandy Kay's recommendation for the month, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Mm-hmm. So I'm one of your hosts, Oz. I'm the other host, Curtis. And before we get rolling into it, we do want to give a shout out to Patreon subscribers, Don S, Aaron A, of course, the aforementioned Mandy Kay, and Melissa L. Thank you for your patronage. And as of today, you guys are off the hook. So Yeah, no <laughs> more work for another 11 months. Thanks for bailing us out. Um, <laughs> so, uh, again, I'm going to cover the lead on this one yeah. uh, as we really... Well, I guess last week Aaron was on, but you kind of covered the lead on that one. Mm-hmm. Don and Melissa L. took the lead on their respective movies. And yeah. uh, so I'm going to take Wes Craven's New Nightmare. It's, it's been a minute, I feel, since we've done a horror film. Yeah, and, and Mandy Kay uh, is a huge horror movie fan. So yes. no, no surprise at no. all that, uh, that, that she lobbed this one at us. I looking at the calendar, our last, our last horror film was week two of November with World War Z. Hmm. And then mm-hmm. October, pretty much then it was just the entire month of October of Stephen King movies. But yeah, it's it's been a few months. All right. Well, let's let's hit 1994's New Nightmare. I actually saw this movie in theaters. I think that was the last time I watched the movie from beginning <laughs> to end. I I probably saw it in theaters as well. Um, I just I don't remember. So yeah. I've seen it so many times since. I got a fun little memory of seeing this movie in the theater. I was a you know freshman in high school. You know, we're, we're you know I'm two months into high school, 14 years old, right? And I was on the uh, the the soccer team, and a bunch of us just spur uh, spur of the moment. Well, now actually, take it back. We had um, it was our like end of the season soccer dinner, and and a bunch of us decided like, hey, let's just go to the movies. And it was again, I like you. We grew up in a very small town, so it yeah. was like a cup. It was like there was like seven of us and there was like a couple of seniors and a couple of juniors and a couple of like freshmen. Yeah. And we all just piled into somebody's station wagon <laughs> and, and went to, yeah. went to the Paramount in Kankakee and saw a new nightmare. It was, it was a yeah, really that fun, is fun especially yeah. as a freshman in high school feeling yeah. like you're in. <laughs> like, yeah. Palling around exactly. with class and go to right. see a fun movie. Yeah. It's a fun time. Cool. Yeah. Well, Hey, let's get to the characters of of new nightmare yeah, yeah uh very meta movie there uh, very much so, so. Yeah. so we've got heather langenkamp as heather langenkamp as well as stepping sort of back into the shoes of nancy thompson as well right. so again matrix well would have been a, a decent addition to the movie yeah. marriage as well just blurring the lines of reality yeah, there, were, there was like even not you won't even say scene to scene as cut to cut for some instances yeah uh, we got Robert England as himself, as well as, uh, of course, as Wikipedia frames it, the entity slash Freddy Krueger. Yeah. <laughs> in quotations. Yes, in quotations. <laughs> He's Freddy Krueger. There He's he an, is. He's an ironic super, uh, super villain. <laughs> there he is. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing has meaning. <laughs> uh, we got Pet Cemetery's own Miko Hughes as Dylan Porter. 
Um, let's see. We got that's see Heather Langenkamp's child in this movie. Yeah. Uh, we got John Saxon as himself, as well as stepping back into the role of Donald Thompson, uh, the father character of Nancy from the first one. I like being John Saxon. Yeah, like, me too. He, he's one of those guys that it's like, why didn't it take off? You know, yeah. like, because he's clearly got the looks, he's got mm-hmm. the charisma, he's got the screen presence. It's like, what is what does Redford and Beatty have that John Saxon didn't have? He's got some sweet kicks from Enter he does. the Dragon. Like, Saxon's got more belts yeah. than those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see Redford throw a <laughs> triple roundhouse. Without a stuntman. Yeah. <laughs> We have Tracy Middendorf as Julie, uh, Dylan's babysitter and Heather's best friend. I like her and her other films, Middendorf on Golf and Mid- <laughs> 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 That that line of films yep. that she did was really yep. good. Her and Tim Conway, that, <laughs> yeah. that famous comedy duo. <laughs> Tim Conway and Tracy Middendorf. He was the she was the inspiration for those films. <laughs> we have David Newsom as Chase Porter, Heather's husband and special effects guy for New Line Cinema. I guess they originally offered the role to her actual husband. Who oh, really? Down. Yeah. Huh. We have uh, Fran Bennett as a doctor who thinks that Heather might be actually hurting her child. We have Wes Craven, again, playing himself. Uh, and then we have uh, a brother and sister siblings, just worth mentioning here. We have uh, Robert Shea, yeah. our producer, and his sister, Lynn, as Nurse with Pill. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you, could, you could easily say that Lynn is by far the more talented of the Shays. Yeah. But she doesn't own the company. So, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, that's nice. He's constantly throwing her a bone. And unlike, uh, like, Coppola throwing his daughter a bone uh-huh. and, and Godfather three, like, like Lynn can actually act. Yeah. She, she could act. So it's like, that's all you gave her was nurse with pill. Like, <laughs> Really jarred something loose there. Tiger. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> There's other people, but whatever. Well, so- it's fun. Cause there are a couple other like nightmare actors, mm-hmm. not the original, but <laughs> just nightmare up. series actors that are yeah. just kind of like, in the background of a couple of scenes. And yeah. so it's one of those, you got your eyes open, you see it. So yeah. otherwise yeah. you wouldn't see it because your eyes are closed. Yeah. I got fun movie, fun <laughs> cast. And as you said, it, it, you're, you're hopping back and forth, yeah. you know, from reality to, yeah. uh, to, yeah, to dreamland. Well, and there's, in as the movie transitions through, and we'll get to this with the plot, like mm-hmm. the fantasy jumps into reality and then eventually they switch to where the reality is jumping into fantasy. So, yeah. you know, like you said, Heather Langenkamp is Heather Langenkamp. The majority of the movie and Freddie's showing up in her world until we switch roles and she's back in his and, yeah. and it's kind of cool. Uh, right. I'm going to take what, the plot. Yeah, what do we yeah. got for the plot of this? Um, and so it's a little bit everywhere, a little bit all over because Real life, which is what we see a lot of Nancy in, is all over. I mean, you've got appointments and you've got... And like yep, She's a working actress. Yeah, characters in movie plots, like cinema plots, typically, you know, we follow one trek of their life. Mm-hmm. That's why you don't see them stop to eat or you don't see them stop to go to the grocery store or the bathroom or whatever, because it's, <laughs> it's not their character drive. But of course, <laughs> I like what Wes did with this is that they made it to where... Like Heather's a working mom. So mm-hmm. she's doing different things. And we see conversations with the babysitter and we see conversations in the limo. And it's like, it's kind of fun because it's, we used the word meta earlier and that's definitely on point, but it, in some ways it almost, almost feels like reality show ish mm-hmm. as we're following Heather around. Now it's yeah. still in the cinema universe. So we're not getting like, you know, like, TLC cutaways to conversation, you know, in front of a <laughs> Which camera. She's at a studio talking to the camera. Exactly. Um, but but it still feels like, okay, we're just day in the life of kind yeah. of thing. Uh, we kick this movie off with... Yeah, a, how, yeah how about the opening scene? With the recreation uh-huh. of the original Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, Freddy's workshop as he's making his glove. Yeah. You don't... I mean, it's really cool full circle moment as... Uh, 
you know, that's what we were introduced to with the original Nightmare um, was Freddy in his workshop. You don't see him. You just see his hands. You just see an arm as he's creating this glove. And we're doing that again. We never really find out why, because there's a movie within a movie that they're making, but we don't ever really get the, it, it, we don't get the feel, we don't ever get the, the details as to what nightmare movie they're making, mm-hmm. aside from it being the one we're watching, which is kind of that meta piece of, Heather doesn't know any more than we know, but like we're being shown the reality as as it's going on. So, um, you know, but this time it's all it's all hooked up with, you know, gizmos and gadgets and wires. Servos and, yeah, and... exactly. There's all kinds of nanobots and <laughs> very high tech. Yeah, yeah. It's it was part of Tony Stark's yeah yeah Mark Mark seventy armor. Yeah, it's the highest tech. That's how high it is. <laughs> it's, it's the high, highest fidelity. It's, it's the highest fidelity. <laughs> it's the highest fidelity. <laughs> um, and so you know, it's she's on set, and they've got they've got flames, and they've got wind, and it's just it's this really like to us as viewers, it's it's home. Like, whoa, this is what we started with. Like, yeah. if you're watching this nightmare movie and you haven't watched any of the other ones, this movie's gonna not gonna make a lick of sense. Mm-hmm. Like because there's so many throwbacks and this is one of them. So it was really cool to see that recreated. Um, But then we pull the camera back and we see the special effects guys. We see, you know, the cast, we see people, we see it's a set, Um, you know, and we find out that uh, Heather's husband is like the main special effects guy. Um, And he's working on this project. It's, it's a secret um that you know she doesn't even know exactly mm. what he's working on um which i don't know like i understand an nda but um <laughs> this is your yeah, wife from your the, wife yeah this is your it's wife a, it's okay to share things you know? the star of the series like <laughs> 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 just see him eating 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 cereal like in um <laughs> not base, in uh or, orgasmo yeah. with, with, oh, the big, yeah. with the big <laughs> what are you doing today i'm gonna go make freddy's claw exactly it's like <laughs> but it's like um i don't like, think i do hamster style anymore <laughs> <laughs> but her, her husband chase is like he's putting in all the effort like he's planning a surprise birthday party like yeah. Like, no, this, you're working. No, he's um, doing his job. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, where are you? Oh, I can't. Oh, just working on a movie. Uh, um, that, and they've got a son, Dylan. Um, Nancy and this. <laughs> Dylan. And the, <laughs> it's Carl Weathers. Um, <laughs> and this in this universe, um, she is a widely recognized actress. Yeah, everybody knows Heather Langenkamp. From Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, yeah. she has been in two of them prior to this one, but... Everyone in LA knows who she is. What do you um, think it's like, Oz, to be to be an actor who's really known for that one thing, and like that's all people reference? There was a movie oh, back. I loved in, you in Nightmare on Elm Street. Oh, right. yeah, well, what about my other thing? Yeah, what about uh, uh, just the ten of us that I was in? It, it probably rem- well. I'm sure that there's a bit of it. I don't think they mind it, honestly, because as you and I have been to several conventions, mm-hmm. that's what they live for. Of I did something noteworthy and there's a fan base and I'm going to milk them for yep. <laughs> everything they've got. It reminds me of a scene back in a nineties movie called soak dish with a pretty star studded lineup. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's a scene where Sally Field's kind of a washed up soap opera star and Whoopi Goldberg, I believe is her assistant. I'm probably mixing up the, the facts of this, but um, Sally Field needs a little bit of endorphin shot. So she, and so she dresses up in, and like this big brimmed hat, sunglasses, like a scarf. And she and Whoopi Goldberg go out to a mall in which I, I, if I remember correctly, she's coming down an escalator and then peels off her costume. So Whoopi Goldberg's like, Oh my God, it's Sally field or whatever. <laughs> to within everybody comes flocking to her because they remember her for that one thing she did a while ago. Yeah. And it was just enough to really give her that sense of, okay, people still know who I am. Um, I'm an important person. It's got to be tough, though. I mean, to to grab on to that thing. Um, I don't feel I could be way wrong, but like I never got the vibe that Heather Langenkamp was that way. 
Um, no. Lou Ferrigno, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's more to me than Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, I will, but I will gladly pay seven, have take your seventy five dollars to sign yeah. your whatever. <laughs> I think I think Lou Ferrigno's on a different path. I think he wants to autograph something for every person in the United in, States in America. Yeah, that's his. <laughs> He's touring the, the the country from coast to coast, <laughs> right. autographing Hulk hands with every step. <laughs> convention con, to convention. <laughs> um, and so yeah, Nancy's widely recognized. Well, Nancy. Okay, Heather. Heather's Heather's <laughs> that, that was blurring the line. Yeah, exactly. Heather's widely recognized for her role uh, as Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street. Now she's shifted over to TV, just like Heather Langenkamp did. Like mm-hmm. she catapulted that night uh, Nightmare on Elm Street into just the ten of us TV show. Um, and it's but that's, that's about all she did, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like whatever. Um, so she's got a nightmare one evening, um, like. There's, there's just so many different moving parts here. There's dreams, there's reality, then there's mm-hmm. the movie that's not reality but is. And um, she wakes up, she has a nightmare that her family's being attacked by. Like she was back on set again that we just saw, and the claws came to life on their own. Um, and like two of her husband's co workers were killed on set by these, yeah. like Freddy, these, you know, animated Freddy claws. They're, chalking it up to just something shorted out but she knows better yeah um and her son was their son was on set too exactly for some yeah reason. so he's seeing all of this she's worked very hard to keep her filmography away from her son with good reason which is understandable <laughs> considering he's like five like yeah. how how hard is it to keep nightmare about on Nightmare on Elm Street away from the eyes of a five-year-old. Like, <laughs> my kids are 13 and nine and they've never seen it. I've actually encouraged my daughter to watch it. Like you're 13, you'll be fine. You know, there's no nudity. Why did we put a trailer for Nightmare in front of Fern Gully? <laughs> right. Why did we name our son Fred Krueger? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Dress him in, in striped sweaters. <laughs> we tell him it's Christmas, but it's not. Um, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, but it's like she struggles with keeping the movie out of his face. And it's, I don't know. It's just bizarre. She wakes up from this dream. There's actually an earthquake going mm-hmm. on. Um, there's a cut on her husband's finger. That's exactly like the cut she just saw happen in her dream. Uh, but naturally she's like, it was just a dream. Like you can get, you can get a cut on your hand in an earthquake. Like that stuff happens. So <laughs> You know, she quickly realizes that this is ridiculous. Like, yeah. you know, your of, finger did not get cut by the claws in my of dream. Of course, nothing supernatural is happening. Right. You know, I'm Heather Langenkamp. And even though I'm star of such films as Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, none of these things happen in real life. I'm Troy McClure. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so you might remember me for such, <laughs> for such self-help videos and get get confident stupid <laughs> oh my um she gets a phone call it's you know and because this is 1994 there's no caller id mess yeah. you know you just answer the phone when it rings it's like a stalking fan yeah. um he's like singing freddie's nursery rhyme mm-hmm. to her but again all of this while not invited, is at least normal ish to somebody who starred in the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. Yes, yeah, yeah, you this is all plausible. Yeah, it's a, it, that's a that's a perfect word for it. Like it's not what she wants in her life, but it's be different if you or I were getting phone calls with singing Freddie's theme song. But um <laughs> Just start singing back with him. <laughs> That's right. I'll Somebody's me, paying me attention. Let's duet this. Uh, <laughs> now, now I get why old people get tricked in his in his own scams. <laughs> I just want to talk to someone. <laughs> you're you're probably not too wrong with that. You know, <laughs> lead lead with some sympathy. Let's not go into that. We don't want to give these scammers any ideas. Of like, <laughs> instead of instead of hitting them up with a Facebook error message, maybe I should actually like ask about the grandkids. Um, and so you know, there's. She hangs up the phone after this. Naturally, the phone rings again. She jumped. Well, it's just the limo guy. He's calling from the limo like, uh, hey, um, you know, I'm here for your ride. Well, she hops in the car. She's got a meeting with Bob Shea. Bob Shea apparently only works in close up camera. 
yep. uh, as this camera <laughs> is up his nose. Um, but he's basically like, hey, Wes has been working on a new Nightmare film, and we'd love for you to come back and play Nancy one last time. To which she's like, hmm. Well, and he's like, your husband's been working on the movie too, and which now she's irritated. Yeah, uh, understandably so. That my husband's been keeping a secret from me. He's been he's <laughs> he got hired onto this nightmare film before I did. <laughs> Don't they know who I am? Just jealous. It's me, Heather Langenkamp. <laughs> <laughs> Stars of such films as Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm Street Three. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you just getting around to ask me this, Bob? Um, and so, you know, we have this meeting. And again, nothing out of the ordinary. She's an actor. Yeah. Going back to a movie studio and a studio president who she's worked with twice mm -hmm. before. Like, not that big of a deal. Um, when she gets home, of course, her... Um, what, was the, what was the babysitter's name? Uh, <laughs> <Dorf>. Julie. Julie. <laughs> yeah, Dorf. Dorf. Her baby, Dorf's Julia. over um yeah julie comes to relieve her you know whatever because she doesn't leave her kid home alone when she gets home um dylan is just standing there watching nightmare on elm street uh in front of an unplugged tv yeah in front of an unplugged tv which naturally she freaks out and um turns the tv off and he just starts screaming a little delayed. You typically do that when the scary stuff happens. What did you do to the Zenith? <laughs> Mom, the RCA is off. <laughs> uh, so um, so he screams at her, and then like his nose starts bleeding. I think it was then his nose starts bleeding. I know at some point his nose starts bleeding. Like it's just freaky stuff. Yeah. You know, freaky stuff. Um, so she keeps getting calls, and so eventually she calls Chase. And she's like, you know, her husband, like, uh, I'm worried. Um, the TV was unplugged yet. It was showing one, you know, Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street, that movie I'm famous for. Um, <laughs> me, Heather, your wife, Heather Langen Camp. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, Chase, uh, it's me, Heather Langen Camp. <laughs> you know, Star yeah. of such films. <laughs> it's like Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration. <laughs> you might remember me from such weddings as, as yeah. the one to yeah, me. As yours and, <laughs> and the video. Um, and so it's like, you need to come home, right? Like. This is yeah, not yeah, right. He's off working on the set. Yeah, he's off working on the set that he she doesn't reveal to him that she knows about. Um, you know, he's like, you know, I I'm working, you know, uh guy one and guy two didn't show up on set. Well, of yeah. course, they were the two people murdered in her dream. Uh -huh. So now she's like, wait a second here. This sounds like it's Fred Krueger. Sounds like Fred Krueger's work. Chase is on his way home, listening to the radio. Um, he starts it's, to, it's the middle of the night. Yeah. Yeah. He starts to doze off. He's working in Palm Springs and she's in LA, but he probably took the 405 up to Ventura. <laughs> 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 Get off of San Bernardino. <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. You should have watched the Californians to know a traffic route. Um, so he falls asleep while driving. This is something we've seen in Freddy movies before, mm -hmm. which adds to that meta piece again, as like some of these Nightmare on Elm Street movie tropes are showing up in this one, but they're showing up in real life. Um, <laughs> I love how at one point, you know, like the claw cl yeah. climbs out, so it's in there with him, and it like scratches across <laughs> his groin. That's, that's what I was going with. Yeah. As he's starting to nod off, Freddy gives him a little wake-up call by just... <laughs> Scratching him right, in, right in the place. And I, I love his reaction. He like reaches down, and, and, like he doesn't say it out loud. No. But, he's, but he's basically like, "Man, my groin really itches. <laughs> Man, it's real itchy down there. <laughs> Didn't use enough gel powder." <laughs> right. Right. So uh, he falls asleep. Well, then he falls completely asleep. Um, Freddy's claw comes up, and much like it did in the original Nightmare when Nancy's in the bathtub, mm -hmm. just kind of comes up from between his legs. Only this time slashes him in the chest. Just uh, buries itself. Yeah, in and, there. and, yeah. and he dies. Like because you you don't walk away from that. Um, you know that's awful. Of course. Mm -hmm. Oh, we get. Uh, let's see. 
we get the funeral. Well, they call Nancy down to the morgue. Yeah, she insists on seeing. Yeah, I, I, because she's she's fishy now at this yeah. point. Like, there's been enough Freddy esque things going mm-hmm. on, um, and so, well, early even prior to this, I, I skipped over it. I made the Arsenio Hall reference, but she also before Chase died made an appearance on a talk show. Mm-hmm. She thought it was just her. Right. So she's doing her interview or whatever. And then we've got a special guest and Robert England as Freddie comes yeah. like slashing through the paper background. Mm-hmm. And, and there he is. And it, it scares her. Like her initial reaction is fear. Yeah. Which I could understand. Now, I've not started a movie before. So obviously when the cameras aren't rolling, you know, it's an actor and whatnot. But I'm sure I could see possibly depending on how the set was i could maybe see a little bit of fear a little like ptsd a little bit yeah i mean especially if she's already kind of on edge yeah with yeah the, well, the, the earthquakes and, yeah the and, dream and, 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 the, and, and the stalker and the, yeah, yeah. And, and dylan's reaction or whatever and so um you know freddie basically just hijacks the interview um it hijacks the audience everybody's i mean She's the guest, but everybody already has like we love Freddie posters yeah. and things like that. And he's just milking the crowd. <laughs> Somebody in the crowd had a go away Heather poster. <laughs> <laughs> go away, Heather Leggy Camp. Uh, <laughs> Star of such movies. <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, you know, he just completely so it's like whether she wants Freddie in her life or not, he's there. Mm-hmm. You know, with Chase working on the set. Dylan seeing the movie, the meeting with Bob, yep. the it's dreams, the talk show, like all of this is rushed back into her life, whether she wants it or not. So Chase is dead. I skipped over that because that remembering that after Chase's death wouldn't fit. Like then she went to a talk show. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so she demands to see his body. Um, and the, the more tech, like, only pulls it back to his shoulders, like won't reveal it any further. Shows her, yep, that's my husband. But she even notices, like, you didn't go back very far. Um, so she wants to see it again. And then she whips that sheet back and she sees those Freddy slash marks down his chest. <laughs> she looks at his groin. Man, he was complaining of being itchy the other day. <laughs> now I see why. <laughs> <laughs> Not enough talk about her. Yeah, tough acting to neck. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> <laughs> that would have been some great product placement. <laughs> Sean Madden just leaves yeah. into the screen. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and so um, we cut to the funeral um, where yep. it's she's there. Everybody's dressed in black. Like John yep. Saxon is there. Wes Craven, Robert we- England. Are Wes all Craven, there. Yep. Robert England. We see uh, Tuesday Night who plays... Um, in the fourth movie, she was like basically the new the the new uh, Nancy, kind of the new Freddy's mm-hmm. female lead. Um, we see Nick Corey, who played Rod in the first Nightmare on Elm Street movie. He gets you know hung up in the jail cell. So it's like again that like the universe is there. Mm-hmm. You know we're in L.A. All these actors are still there, and it matters. They're there for her. They're there for Nightmare. You know it's like this like sub little family they've got. Um, she kind of dozes off again, I think. Um, Maybe. Mm. Yeah, it's like we get this other dream sequence where, um, you know, like the casket opens up. I, I, oh, I, oh, it was an earthquake. That's what it was. Yeah. yeah, that's what it was. Another earthquake hits during the um, during the funeral and the casket falls into the the burial hole. And as in like, as she kind of goes in after it, if I remember it, I yeah. watched this like a week ago. She kind of goes in after it only to see like Freddie is pulling things down from down below. Yeah. The casket opens up and it's chase falls out. And of course he's all dead, but he's yeah, not some, gross. Some Dylan is there. Yeah. Dylan is being pulled down by Freddie. Chase is like, like inviting he- Nancy or Heather, whatever she is at this point. To, to join him or whatever. And then she wakes up. And of course, none of that was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so she's like screaming in hysterics at her husband's funeral, which I mean, if you're going to, 
if you're going to nod off and then wake up in hysterics, I think a funeral is not a bad place to do it. <laughs> at least that's a common reaction. Like you don't want to do that. Like when you're like selecting a melon at the store, <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're tapping on the honeydew. And, <laughs> yeah. ah! <laughs> Chase. Um, and so, uh, you know, then John, you know, kind of meets up with her afterwards, John Saxon, who played her movie father in the first mm -hmm. one and the third one, really. Um, and he's still kind of fatherly here. He suggests, yeah, you guys should probably get some medical attention for yourself, for your son. Like, you've been through a lot. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you got you got to take care of yourself. Um, so she does, uh, you know, takes, you know, Dylan is still regressing health wise like he's now afraid to fall asleep he's afraid of freddy krueger mm -hmm. even though heather's never shown him any of her films like these are all things he's cognizant about yeah so she goes to see west she wants to figure out what's going on she goes to see west craven um and he's very distant and yeah. you know he's almost kind of paranoid yes he's telling her about some nightmares he's had um you know and he's worried he kind of tells her he's worried that the nightmare films have like captured this like ancient as he refers to freddy as an entity like this mm -hmm. ancient entity um you know and that that this entity was basically captured within the celluloid but of course, the previous film was Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, which was the last like cinema movie. So Wes is like, I'm afraid that with the last movie ending the series, that this entity has been freed and he's now operating in our world. Um, because Hollywood. Because Hollywood. Because it's Wes Craven. <laughs> like, um, and so... Uh, we've got this... Yeah, this entity basically takes on the Freddy role, yes. but not the funny, quippy Freddy that we've seen in the last three or four movies, but more this sinister, like... Kind of the original vision of what yeah, yeah, with a little bit more hyper-realism to it. Yeah. Like, it's... I I think he still looks very, like, rubbery and plasticky, not sure. so much burn victim-ish. But still, still more visceral. Yes, yeah, very much so, very much so. Um, she, uh, you know, she talks with, you know, she wants to talk, she calls Robert England to talk about this. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Robert's also very distant. He's painting as he's talking. Well, he's painting this entity of Freddie. Um, so it's like, yeah, this Harbinger is back and he's just painting a self portrait. <laughs> it's a mirror. <laughs> he's just painting on a mirror <laughs> with the phone in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's but it's like it's it's absorbing all of them. Yeah. Like Robert, Wes, you know, Bob Shea, you know, Heather. It's it's incorporated all of them. Um and so, you know, he's he's even describing this entity, this Freddy, as as separate from himself, because he's acknowledged like Freddy is me and I'm Freddy, but this is different. Yeah. This is not me. This is separate from me. This is something that even scares me. And it, it's ties it in, you know, this almost makes it, which kind of gives a vibe in the film too, very like, like folklore nursery rhyme. Sure. Like, and Greta. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. It's got that. It's the, the movies kind of flowed into that feel a little bit as Dylan's role in the movie becomes more pronounced of, He's got this toy dinosaur he puts at the foot of his bed because he keeps the bad man away. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like he comes up from the foot of the bed to get me. It's like all these little things. Um, there's another earthquake because they're in L.A. You get these things three or four times yeah. a week, apparently. <laughs> um, and so, you know, Heather takes still into the hospital where we see the doctor. The doctor thinks maybe there's abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, let us keep him and observe him. Um, well, I mean, with good reason. Yeah, too. oh, all absolutely. The all the evidence is yeah, there. Yeah, it's all there. <laughs> you know, and Nancy's doesn't like the idea, but I mean, whatever, you know, it moves the plot along. Um, so she comes back to get Dylan's dinosaur because Dylan doesn't want to stay without his dinosaur because, like I just mentioned, it keeps, mm -hmm. you know, keeps the bad man away. 
Um, meanwhile, Julie is staying because this is this is just stupid on Heather's part. Hey, Julie, you stay here at the hospital with my son. I'm going to run home and get his toy dinosaur. Yeah. And don't don't let the the medical team treat him yeah. while I'm gone. Right, don't. Like, because out of fear of him falling asleep. Yeah, you be the advocate. I'm going to be the parent that leaves. Like, yeah. Like, I'll yeah. go home and get the dinosaur. Right. You stay here, Julie. You, you protect my son. Yeah, take care. <laughs> you stay here, like, teenage girl. Um, I'm going to go get a plushie. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> It's it's like that scene at uh at Best to Show where <laughs> go get busy <laughs> bee, You're busy bee, You're busy bee. Was it this one? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a fish. <laughs> it's clearly a fish. And so they do, they do the old bait and switch on Julie as uh one nurse is holding Dylan and the other Julie's trying to fight the other one off. Well, the one that's holding Dylan actually has the syringe of medication. Yeah, uh, and Dylan falls asleep. And while Dylan falls asleep, Freddy comes because that's what happens when you mm-hmm. fall asleep. Even though Freddy's been coming into this world without someone asleep all movie. <laughs> like, <sighs> Try not to make think yeah. too hard about this one. <laughs> but Freddy shows up. We get another almost like first kill of original nightmare when Tina was killed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's there. Julie can see him. Dylan can see him, but no one else can see him. As as he kills Julie, dragging her up the wall across mm-hmm. the across the ceiling, very Jamiroquai like. <laughs> you ever play Skin the Cat? I which didn't I don't know. There's some plot lines in here that I was like, mm-hmm. what? <laughs> like like that that just seemed like a goofy throw. You ever play Skin the Cat? Like, but she didn't skin her. <laughs> you ever play Boggle? <laughs> <laughs> Ever play Chinese checkers? <laughs> Boggle. Um, and so Julie's killed. Uh, Dylan, who, when before Nancy left, she said, I'm just across the highway. Like, we're just right over there. Well, Dylan uh, is a sleepwalker now, apparently. Mm-hmm. And he just walks right out of the room. Um, and And so walks across the highway because highway, that's where home is like yep. actually a pretty tense scene if the cgi were a little better i think it would have been a- <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna come back up later yeah wink, same, wink. same here yeah. uh right and so it um you know he's just you know this kid walking across this extremely busy uh, mm-hmm. freeway and you know and heather's chasing him down um you know freddie's just taunting her just dangling dylan like Picking him up and dipping him. I mean, it's, we yeah. get a little bit of the funny Freddy here, but not enough. Like, he's not like Bugs Bunny quippy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dylan doesn't hold up a sign that says no. yikes. <laughs> right. <laughs> There's no Acme truck. Um, and so Heather gets home, and now she's starting to realize even more so of this overlap, uh-huh. you know, with, with Freddy's world. It's all blurring together. Um, like, John Saxon shows up. Um, he calls her Nancy. Yeah, he like we have a we have a John and Heather moment, but then he walks away, and the camera cuts to him, and he's dressed as mm-hmm. like her police officer father, Don Thompson. And she was like, "Why are you calling me Nancy?" Like he's calling her Nancy. Why'd you call me Nancy? Cut to him. He's dressed like Nightmare One. Cut back to her. She's dressed like Nightmare One. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and so. Heather finally, because again, Bob Shea's been trying to get her to come back and play Nancy for one last time. She finally embraces this role, realizing, like... This is what I got to do. Yeah, I got to do it on his turf. Mm -hmm. Uh, The house is now transformed into his house. Yep. Um, And so she goes in after him. I love the the musical cues from the first one right there as well. Yeah, I I really have always enjoyed the music of the first Nightmare. I think it's just genuinely creepy. I remember one of my first teaching jobs, I was doing a study hall um, and it was October. So I was playing like creepy music Mm -hmm. for the kids and the kids are working and I'm sitting there and this was back when, you know, like computers still have big monitors. Mm -hmm. Um, So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, I started to daydream as I'm sitting there, this nightmare music is playing and I'm looking at this big monitor and like, I started creeping myself out. Like what would happen if like, the monitor started typing, you know, like yeah. just, I just let my mind kind of run and, and it, it, 
it bothered me. Clear, clearly, 20 years later, I still like in my head when I hear the original Night Run Elm Street. Then he picked up a honeydew melon and started screaming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so she em- embraces her. Th- I'm, I got to be Nancy one more time. Yeah, I got to do this. It's the only way I'm going to end this. Right. Um, so she then finds a trail of Dylan's sleeping pills because he's been like faking them out. Yeah. Um, and she follows him down into the boiler room. Um, she's got, a, you know, Freddie fights her off. You know, it's basically Freddie wants mm-hmm. Dylan. Nancy doesn't want Freddie to have Dylan and they fight it out. Like, um, you know, he traps Dylan in a furnace. He escapes, comes back to Heather. Together, they push Freddie into the furnace, hence mm-hmm. the Hansel and Gretel theme. Um, so they destroy, like, Freddie's. It's like throws his super tongue out there. It's like just yeah. some goofy stuff. Um, but Dylan super tongue. <laughs> so <laughs> Dylan and Heather then, uh, after they defeat Freddie by throwing him in this furnace, and he like melts into the devil at one point. Like it's just yeah. whatever some imagery. Uh, Dylan and Heather uh, emerge from like the foot of his bed. They're in his bed, and in the screen pl- or in the screenplay in the blankets is the screenplay that they are acting out as we're watching them act mm-hmm. it out. And saying the lines. That yes, are in the, yeah, exactly. I, I know it's hokey. I always think that's kind of cool when, when movies can go that meta to where mm-hmm. like the characters in the movie aren't like, they realize they're acting. I got that same vibe watching adaptation. I mm-hmm. loved that switch yeah. in the movie when it went from like one Kaufman brothers script to the other Kaufman brothers script yeah. and watching that, like, Oh, this was so cool. Watching that trans transaction. Um, you know, Wes Craven's written a note in there for Nancy. Thanks. Thanks for defeating Freddie and playing Nancy one last time. Um, so it, like that should be it. That's it for the nightmare films was basically yeah. Wes started it. Wes ended it. We're done. Freddie's put to bed. We're never going to see him again. Um, until you know Freddy versus Jason and yeah, well the remake and <laughs> yeah. yeah, so and that's that's uh, Wes Craven's new nightmare. Thank yeah. you, Mandy K. Yeah, thank you for for that suggestion. Yeah, uh, for Patreon subscriber month. Hey Oz, uh, it's that point in the show where uh, you and I each give our own unique rating about the film we've been yapping about. 94's new nightmare. Hey Oz, how would you rate this flick? Uh, I'm gonna give it five Freddy gloves. Five gloves. Not not out of a certain number, just. Just, just five Freddy gloves. Just five gloves. That works. Yep. How about you giving it? Uh, let's go with, uh, let's say, 64 feet of excess tongue. <laughs> <laughs> that works. Have fun finding an image for that. Yeah, there's Gene Simmons out there. There, there you go. <laughs> oh, I just, I just looked up long tongue. Yeah, I won't have a problem. <laughs> this is, this, this is actually kind of gross. <laughs> don't, go, don't, no, Google don't, don't Google tongue. long tongue. No, <laughs> that's gross. Moving on. Uh, Oz and I have been scouring the interwebs, searching for unprofessional reviews that tickle our funny bones, and we hope they tickle yours as well. Hey, Oz, what is your outside insight? Uh, I've got two quick ones. The first one is a five star review from P. 187 it says this is the scariest one even though freddie looks like a dick tracy villain (laughs) okay and my second one is a three and a half star from kyk it says meta horror is so annoying unless it's wes (laughs) (laughs) it's so annoying unless wes is going at unless you take the you take the two all far (laughs) <laughs> oh, what do you got for your outside insight? I got a couple quick ones as well, both from the Internet Movie Database. Uh, the first one is a one out of ten uh, from Ian Bell. How on earth anybody can find this pile of manure remotely scary is beyond me. The sad reality is that Craven is given far too much credit in a genre where he is at best an average talent. Compared to the brilliance of Robert Wise, Alfred Hitchcock, and Toby Hooper, Mr. Craven stands as a mere footnote in the annals of horror. Oof. Yeah. Oof. Uh-huh. I just wonder, like, has this guy looked at his filmography? Mm-hmm. Like, Hills Have Eyes, Last House on the Left, mm-hmm. Nightmare, Scream, like Pilot, Serpent. 
serpent in the rainbow pile of manure yeah well, manure has its uses yeah it's used to grow beautiful things it's true here's the other one this is from reality in mind this movie sucks also one out of ten by the way <laughs> okay <laughs> this movie sucks imagine having so much ego that you would write this piece of, piece of garbage and direct it seriously dream child is more entertaining than this Kruger mask looks horrible in fact this glove looks horrible how do you mess up the glove <laughs> <laughs> oh my <laughs> how do you do that <laughs> dream child is more entertaining yeah, well dream child was more entertaining because dream child was awful and you watch that movie knowing that it's awful. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, okay. Well, hey, folks, it's that point in the show you've all been waiting for. Our signature segment, the 3 two, one in which Oz and I each share three goods, two bads, and one, huh, about the film in question. In this case, 94's New Nightmare. Oz, what are your three goods? Uh, my first good is I really enjoyed the meta concept of this film. Yeah. Uh, Wes obviously did too, as his next movie out really, really leaned into that meta concept with mm. Scream. Uh, but I, I, I thought it was very well done. And in '94, this was actually pretty, pretty original idea. Yeah, like that was, you know, that meta concept of. We've been doing this for a decade. Every, like everybody knows who Freddy is. Let's just lean into it and play on that fact that everybody knows who he is. So, what if he started to, you know, really infiltrate the real world as opposed mm -hmm. to uh, the cinema world? So, I really like that meta concept. One of my favorite images, not just from this movie, but all the Nightmare movies, is when Freddy comes onto the talk show. Yeah, and he's really playing to the crowd, and that spotlight's on him, and we get the shot from behind him as he's slowly waving his arms, yeah. talking about my children, and it's just like we know it's Robert dressed as Freddy that came out, but just for that moment, it's like it's Freddy, like yeah, it's completely Freddy. There's no Robert England. It's Freddy in the real world, but and not. He's, and, he's, and he's a celebrity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's more popular than than Heather by far. Um, but it's just, I've always liked that kind of slower motion, waving his arms in front of, in front of that spotlight. I think it's mm. just so just menacing. Um, and I just, I've always liked that. So that's my second good. My third one is, um, really turning Freddie into folklore was, was a really cool touch sure. because we've seen him as that same villain that attacks in your dreams, which is folklore in its own. Like, um, you know, there's not a lot of difference between Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface, et cetera. But Freddy is different in that he attacks in your dreams. Like there's, you know, you can't escape that kind of, of thing. Um, but turning it, actually like acknowledging it and turning it into folklore to where it is almost this age old tale, this age old entity that we've unlocked. Yeah, it's a little heavy and kind of goofy, but um, I kind of liked it because it did give it it gave it a little different feel than just another Freddy movie. Yeah. It, it really felt um, a little bit more grandiose in terms of like, you know, like a Hansel and Gretel reenactment or something like that. It just felt like, okay, you're, you're going off a, of a story that's been here a long time. So those are my three goods. What do you got? Oh, uh, for my three goods, I'm going to start with just the opening sequence. I, mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that because it like, especially if you're going into the movie and you have no idea that it's it's going to be yeah. a meta, you know, it's, you know, you, you see them reforging the, you know, the hand, you're not quite sure what's happening. And then, right. and then you pull back and it's the set and then the attack happens. Yeah. So I, I love that opening sequence. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, my second good, uh, let's go with um, the rotating room. And, mm. and the scene with Julie, oh, I, I thought they really nailed that. And, yeah. you know, it's, you know, Freddie at one point, he's talking to to Dylan, but but he's talking to the camera. And that's when he leans in and does the whole scary yeah. cat thing. Yeah. And, even, and even if you're not, you don't care for that line, just just the way they framed oh, it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Was, yeah. yeah, that whole scene was really cool. Yeah. And then my third good, uh, just the real effects of trauma. You know, mm. you can... You know, it's you used the term PTSD before, and you could tell that that you know that Heather character in the movie yeah. is really suffering from from PTSD and and suffering from uh, from anxiety just as a result of everything that's going on. Um, you know, with with 
you know, the earthquakes and the stalker and right. Well, and she she dealt with a stalker in real life. Mm -hmm. um, I had read that in the trivia that like she and her husband moved to England for a while because she was being stalked by a fan that was upset with her because the series was over. <laughs> and so it's her fault. Yeah, but it's, you know. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's a reason why her husband didn't want the role of Chase because it's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little, little too close. Yeah, yeah. Let's not, yeah. you know, we did live this. And so obviously that was incorporated for a reason. You know, I don't think yeah. Wes accidentally, like, oh, I didn't even, wasn't aware that you moved away. But, um, but yeah, that's, I got you there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So those are my three goods, Oz. What are your two bads? Uh, my first one, and you'd mention them, I come up to CGI is really rough in this movie. <laughs> yes. uh, oh yeah. It the movie did only have an eight million dollar budget, um, and so that obviously was a factor as to why. Plus, they just kept killing the special effects guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you can't do the effects. Yeah. You keep killing off the effects you, guys. You kill them before you need them. I mean, that's <laughs> kind of the bad idea. <laughs> it's like another meta movie, it's like Spaceballs. Yeah, yeah. Where, where the, they're having the big, uh, the big lightsaber, the Schwartz yeah. scene at the end, <laughs> and one of them swings and hits a guy in the crew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, uh, he did it. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the the CGI was just it. It was a little rough around the edges, but uh, it it is what it is. Um, and then when Freddy's super tongue lashes out and grabs um, Nancy by the leg, and and when I I'm pretty sure correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it grabbed Nancy by the leg and then she was having Dylan kind of stab at the tongue mm -hmm. or what um, the noises Freddy was making when his tongue was being stabbed because of course his tongue was out. He was just, yeah. it was just, it just, it really, it, I won't say it took me out of the scene, but it was just so goofy sounding like, but it was probably accurate of what sounds you would make when your tongue is out. But um, that's my second badge. Just those goofy sounds Freddie was making when his <laughs> super tongue was being stabbed. <laughs> super tongue being right. stabbed. What do you got? Oh, for my bads, I'm gonna start with uh, Wes Craven, the actor. Uh, yep, <laughs> I had I had that originally as uh -huh. he and Bob Shea as well. Yeah. <laughs> Wes Craven, you know, world renowned, you know, writer, yeah. director. It's a good thing he's not in front of the camera very often. Mm -hmm. So he's not. He's not no. very good. No. Uh, and my second bad, I, I uh, some of the like creepy possessed child stuff kind of wore on me. Yeah. Like, uh, it, it, I get it. It's, I mean, it's upping the tension for Heather. It's another thing for her yeah. to be upset about, but like, eh, eh, right. Eh. It's, it's well, and you get the, like, pick a lane. Like, yeah. You know, is Freddie terrorizing or is he possessing? Like, yeah. It just, yeah, I get you. I get you. It was like, there was no indication that that could or should be happening. And then suddenly, you've got little Miko Hughes talking in his gravelly voice. And it's yeah. like, like, okay. Like kids are scary enough in movies, like trying to get them to sound scary usually goes the other direction. Yeah. So those are my two bads. Hey, Oz, what's your huh? Um, this is crazy that like the Freddy Krueger train came f like full circle in, in a decade. Mm hmm. Like, this movie came out 10 years after the original. So in 10 years, and it just shows you how, like, how greedy Hollywood can be. Like, mm -hmm. 10 years they're cranking these things out, and it just ran out of steam. This was probably the one of easily the highest critically approved nightmare movies, but it was also the least grossing nightmare movie. Like it was well done. Like I would, mm -hmm. in terms of quality, I would take this over um, anything after three, because uh, this technically would have been seven. Um, but it's like that's seven movies in ten years. That's a lot. Yeah, uh, and it's like saw the, it's like it's the MCU for well, movies. yes. Saw did the same thing. It was cracking them out every year. Paranormal Fast Activity, Furious. Fast and Furious, um, and Friday the Thirteenth did it too. Mm -hmm. Halloween put a little bit of space, not much. Um, but it's like we they they killed their own monster, really. Uh, you know, it was just oversaturation. Um Scream has done it better. They came out with 
um, three of them. And then there were like seven years before the fourth one. And then another like seven years before the fifth one. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Maybe it was more than that. Anyway, like they spaced them out enough to where, you know, they've, there's another one coming out this year. This would be the third year in a row. Well, it's like, it's right back to it. Um, and really like Star Wars was no different. Harry Potter was no different. It's like, you get it. You know, you want, we want to keep our fans fed, but there also is something to be said about incubation time. Yeah. Like, you know, too fast. Uh, and it just doesn't work. Yeah. And so it's the just, audience wanting more. It, it was just crazy to think that like, here we are with a meta Freddy movie just 10 years after it came out. And you and I grew up in this, in this era. Mm-hmm. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street's, it's the first horror movie I remember watching. Um, my mom had rented a VCR and Nightmare on Elm Street from a local florist that also rented videos because that's what it was in the mid 80s. Mm-hmm. There wasn't real dedicated stores yet. Uh, at least where I was from. And I remember her plopping me on her lap and making me watch this movie at like six Hmm. because she wanted me to know that scary movies are fake. Uh, And my grandpa did the same thing with her with the Twilight Zone. Like he made her watch it with him and it really opened up her love of horror films as it did for me. Hmm. Um, You know, but it's like, man, just to think that like 10 years later and this completely out of steam. So but there's video yeah. games and oh yeah, I mean, like all sorts of media. Well, yeah, it's just it's everywhere. Like kids dressing up as Freddy for Halloween. Like this is a child killer yeah. that kids are dressing up as, and their parents are like, "This yeah. is great." Who was know? burned in a fire? You're right. Yeah, he was a child molester murderer, and parents are like, "Sign me up." <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to be for Halloween, Timmy? Right. Burn child molester. Right. That's what I'd like to be. Um, and so that's that's my ha huh, is that it was just crazy that this is just ten years after Freddy debuted and it was just larger than life. So yeah. what do you got? Uh for my ha, huh, I'm actually gonna take one of your bads kind of a step further. Is it just me or did the entire act three kind of become the thing that this movie was poking fun at? Yeah. And I and I get like you're back in his like dreamscape mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but it 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 was the goofiness. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, like like the tongue and some yep. of the lines and it, yeah. And clearly Freddie had established he could do supernatural things in the real world. Yeah. Because I mean the like Julie's murder and Chase's murder, like he could do those things, but yet you're right, when we're back on his turf, it's back to like Acme Acres. Yeah, <laughs> we're lucky Heather didn't have an anvil fall on her head. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I agree though. It was it was an odd yep. choice. So that's my ha, huh? and that wraps Patreon uh, subscriber month. Oz, what a fun month! It really had. was. Again, thank you again, Mandy K, for suggesting this one. It had yep. been it had been a while since I'd seen it, but yeah, fun movie. And thank you to all of our Patreons. Absolutely, yeah, we'll, Melissa, uh... Don, Aaron. Uh, and Mandy, thank you so much. We yep. appreciate it. We'll have to do it again next year. May- and maybe not back-to-back with Wife's Choice so that we actually have to work <laughs> for once. But uh, we are back on the dock, though. We're back on the clock. Oh, as we are thinking caps back on. Yeah, we do. Well, luckily, we've already put them on <laughs> uh, for quite a while. Uh, what's our theme for next month? Because you're kicking it off. Yeah, next month, as of this recording, it'll be April 2024. We are going to go with non-Marvel or DC comic book movies. So that, that's, right. that's, the, that's the bit here. It is movies based off comic books, but cannot have Marvel or Detective Comics as the publisher. Yeah. So you're not going to see any X-Men. You're not going to see any nope. Batman. You're not going to see any Iron Man, Superman, mm-hmm. Wonder Woman. Um <laughs> You're not going to see anybody whose last name ends with a man. With man, yeah. yeah. Man or and or men. So actually, what are we kicking off first then? If we're, if Ironically, we're st- <laughs> yes. We're kicking off uh, with a mid-90s romp of a movie, a flawed movie, but an incredibly fun watch. We're going with 1995's Tank Girl. A movie I've not seen. Oh, it is. Oh. It's... It's it's got some moments where you're like, oh, but it's also got some moments where it's like where you're just like cheering at the yeah, screen. That's great. It's, it's a fun movie with one of the best soundtracks. Oh, that'll be 90s. fun too. Yeah. yeah. Is that Lori Petty? It's Lori Petty, a young Naomi Watts, oh. Malcolm McDowell, Ice T. Whoa. 
to be fair, Malcolm McDowell's in just about everything. So that's true. I but Ice T, yeah, nice. Ice T as basically a giant kangaroo. Okay, I'm in. Mm-hmm. So there's I mean, your homework, guys. That's fine. Uh, Tank Girl for next yeah, week. We're I, to Tank Girl. Good theme. Looking at our docket, we've got well, they're all with comic book movies that aren't centered around the big two. Yeah. In many ways, these four we're covering are better movies than some of those that have come out from the big two. So, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that covers this month. And social media-wise, you guys can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. There is a link to Patreon down below if you'd like to join. Um, Great time this month. Good time coming up. I'm looking forward to, uh, to a first watch of Tank Girl. And for another episode of Let's Talk About Flicks, I'm Oz. I'm Curtis. And we'll see you guys next week.